Let's look at an inexpensive yet effective antenna for GMRS and VHF and UHF dual band ham radios. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. You'd be joining over 10,000 others who enjoy this content, and I really appreciate it. In this video, we're going to discuss an inexpensive yet high-quality antenna for your GMRS or UHF VHF single or dual band radio base station. Specifically, we'll be talking about three different J-Pol antenna options designed and sold by Ed Fong. These include the dual band UHF VHF J-Pol the UHF J-Pole tuned for GMRS, and the portable roll-up J-Pole for VHF and UHF portable operations. All these antennas are available from Ed Fong, and all are about $55. I'll leave a link in the video description below. I've purchased and used all these antennas, and I have no affiliation with the seller. First, a quick note about the seller. Ed Fong is a professor at a California university in electrical engineering. He and his students build and test antennas and the proceeds go to support student activities. To order, send him an email using the address on his site and he'll send return ordering instructions. I used PayPal and added the PayPal fee to the order as a way to add support to the students. There are several YouTube recordings of presentations Professor Fong has made to amateur radio clubs where he goes into great detail on how the j pole works and things you should consider when using his. These antennas come coiled in a small plastic bag and include the fully assembled antenna along with a three quarter inch PVC cap with the coax connector and a three quarter inch cap for the top of the assembly. You'll need to supply a length of 220 PSI PVC pipe for the antenna to slide into. He'll give you the product number for the pipe from Lowe's Home Depot, and Menards. A 10-foot length is only about $6. The GMRS antenna requires a 37-inch length, and the dual-band ham version requires about 60 inches. The ham dual-band and the GMRS or UHF single-band antennas need the PVC pipe to support them. That also means that they can be easily mounted on a roof with a gable mount or with a hose clamp around a plumbing vent. There's a length of wire from the end cap to the attachment point on the antenna, which means you have about 8 to 10 inches at the bottom of the antenna for mounting without interfering with the radio signals. If you're like me and have outside antenna restrictions from an HOA, you can hang the PVC pipe in your attic or just lean it in a window casing. I have mine in a second floor window and get out just fine. Obviously, a roof mounted antenna is optimum. The portable dual band version is a bit different. That antenna is designed and tuned to hang outside without a PVC casing. For example, you can connect it to a throw line and pull it up into a tree, or do like I do and attach it to a hook on my RV's flagpole when I'm out camping. One of the interesting things about these antennas is that they are each tuned during assembly and take into account the PVC case. 
using the wrong PVC pipe or painting the PVC with paint that includes metal nanoparticles will negatively impact antenna performance. SWR ratings are good. The GMRS antenna I recently purchased showed a SWR of less than 1.1 to 1. My dual band antenna showed 1.4 to 1 and a bit higher on UHF when standing in my window. The dual band antennas will take up to 75 watts output and the GMRS will take the 50 watts allowed by the regulations. One of the really handy features of J-Pole antennas is that they don't use radials for ground plane. Take a look at one of Professor Fong's videos for an in-depth explanation of why that is. Let's finish up with just a quick overview of what a J-Pole is and how these antennas work. The J-Pole gets its name from the shape of the antenna. It has a tall element that's three quarters of a wavelength long and a short element that's one quarter wavelength long. The two elements are connected at the bottom. J-poles are tuned to minimum SWR by matching the impedance between the two elements. You'd use an antenna analyzer and slide the two connecting elements from your coax up the feed line or down the length of the short element until you find the spot with the lowest SWR. This all has to do with the fact that the antenna has very high impedance at the open end and no impedance at all on the shorted end. The good news is that the antenna comes fully and properly tuned. As you can see in this picture, the UHF or GMRS version of the antenna has the matching connections at the bottom and a cut in the latter line where the one quarter wave point is for the short element. The dual band J-Pole is a bit different. Since the 70 centimeter wavelength of the UHF band is shorter than the 2 meter band wavelength, the different wavelengths have to be accounted for. As Dr. Fong explains in his videos, a 2 meter J-Pole will resonate on the third harmonic of the 2 meter input. However, the radiation pattern is much higher than that on the 2 meter band. Since these frequency bands are line of sight, radiating signals upward limits your ability to contact stations at or near the ground level. Thus, the acceptable SWR of the 2 meter only antenna is more than offset by the unacceptable radiation pattern. He solves this problem in the dual band antenna as you see in this picture. He places a small length of coax in the long element at the 70 centimeter wavelength, which acts as a choke or a block to signals at that 70 centimeter frequency. Two meter signals pass through to the full length of the antenna, but the 70 centimeter signals see that same antenna as only three quarters wavelength for that 70 centimeter frequency and stop at the coax insert. This is a much more elegant solution than just using a 2 meter J-pole and accepting the fact that much of your output is beaming into the sky. As I said earlier, I've purchased three of these antennas. They're lightweight, simple construction, low cost, and solid performance make them perfect for my needs. Join me over here for my review of the Oshan KG-1000 Plus GMRS mobile transceiver. It was the recipient of my new Ed Fong GMRS J-Pole antenna. As always, please subscribe. Thanks for watching and 73.